Today, our paper's title is Learning to Distinguish Multi-User Coupling Behaviors for TV Recommendation. It's a cooperation result by Shanghai Yu Jiao Tong University, Digital Brain Laboratory, and China Mobile. So let's get started. So the presentation will be divided into four parts. First of all, I will include my motivation, the background, and our challenges to face. In the second part, I will go to the methodology part, describing our algorithms and explaining all the details. Then I will describe the experiments and results, showing the effectiveness of our algorithm. Finally, we will have a conclusion. So let's begin with the introduction. Nowadays, with the rapid development of the smart TV, much more programs are available on televisions instead of preset programs. In order to filter huge amount of programs, recommendation system is very important. It is now widely used in smart TV, uh, which can both satisfy user interest and give better service to win more users for TV service providers. In this background, our main problem emerges, which is the shared account problem. Since TV is a household device, there can be more than one family members sharing the account, which may be a big problem of recommendation system because different individual behavior would be coupled with others' behaviors, and the coupling behaviors in one account may be noise to each other. And we will face two challenges. The major challenge is how to identify which current family member is now watching TV. Of course, we do not have uh, no, we have no ground truth supervision in log data. Of course, we cannot let users choose who they are when they are watching TV. Uh, how? By remote control? Uh, no, that's impossible. So every behavior is anonymous to us. And the second challenge is to extract the current member's historical interest. We should figure out how to decouple their coupling behaviors and how to use pure or relatively pure behaviors to help recommend. So that's what our research does. This is the contributions of, of our researches. First of all, we propose Cosmo coupling behavior model for TV recommendation. It incorporates user identification through a session aware co-attention. The attention is not only aware of the candidate item and the historical behaviors, but also the current session that implies the user identification. Secondly, we propose to use multi-device account data. It is then easy to get data in TV recommendation scenario, and it can be used as a weak supervision for distinguishing the coupling behaviors. Okay, let's go to the methodology part. I just said we will face two challenges, and the major challenge is to, is to identify the current user. So to identify the current user, we use a current session information. A session is defined as the time period between the user turning on the TV and turning it off. We assume that it's the behaviors in the same session belongs to a same user. It is because in most situations, the people who turn on the TV and turn off the TV is the same one. So we can imply that uh, we can know who the next action will be according to the current session. For example, if my mother watches 10 programs in the current session and I will be very confident of the 11th program still being watched by her, but not my father. Secondly, we design a session well co-attention module. Not only the target item is used as the query, the current session information should also be used as the attention query. This is because the se session information contains user identity, which helps distinguish useful historical behaviors belonging to him. And finally, a small proportion of accounts has multiple devices. The device information could be used as a weak supervision of the user identification because different users may watch TV in their own room. For example, television A is in my father's room, television B is in my mother's room, and television C is in, my, is in the living room. The three televisions share the same account, which is the family account, but the three televisions can also have their own device ID. And since I can only watch TV in the living room, so the device ID of the TV in the living room may contain my information, and the recommendation system will know that the behaviors in the living room will probably belong to me. But since my father and Marco can also watch TV in the living room, the device ID may be a signal, but only a weak one. So instead of using it to be a direct supervision signal, we choose to use it from in an, in an attention module. Okay, 
This is an overview of our algorithm called Cosmo. We can see that the major imports uh, are two parts, uh, are two sequences. The first sequence is the current session sequences, the big S. And the second sequence is the historical behavior sequence, the big H. The two sequences interact with each other through the session network co-attention module. And we can describe the current user's interest more precisely by the pairwise attention loss module. These two modules are the major two components of our algorithm Cosmo. I will talk these two parts later. Okay, let's talk about the session network co-attention first. Unlike the traditional attention, the session network co-attention intends to capture the most significant correlation among sessions, sequences to a single historical behavior. Uh, how, the, how do we do? We first uh, calculate all the scores of the session sequences and the historical behaviors. And then we choose a maximum score of a session sequence to one single historical behavior. It means that if a historical behavior is strongly correlated to any of the behaviors in session sequence, then the historical behavior is useful because it contains current users' interests. In this way, we can use session aware co-attention to distinguish the historical behaviors and, the, uh, and, and choose some behaviors that, current, uh, that contains user interests. Okay, the second module is the pairwise attention loss. Different device IDs of behaviors usually indicate different users. So pairwise attention loss intends to increase attention score of historical behaviors with the same device ID as the current session, while decreasing the attention weights of behaviors with different device IDs. In this way, we can pay more attention to the historical behaviors with the same device ID as the current session. Okay, here's our training process. Our training process uh, has two stages. We, we, we must train the models in two stages. That is because we have both single device accounts and multi-device accounts. Imagine that if you have only one television in your, in your home and all the people watch this television, then pairwise attention loss will be meaningless. So we have to train our model normally in the first stage and only in the second stage, we have to introduce the uh, pairwise attention loss module. Okay, let's talk about the experiments and the results. I do the experiments in, two, in three data sets. One of them is China Mobile dataset, which is one of the biggest Chinese TV service provider. And the other two data sets are omitted in this slide. The overall performance of Cosmo on ranking matrix is better than the other baselines, uh, which include normal sequence behavior models like DIN and the shared account methods. The ablation study showed that removing session aware co-attention and uh, attention loss will both harm the results. And interesting is that if we cannot obtain the device information, only utilizing the session aware co-attention module could si achieve satisfying results. This is because the session aware co-attention module is more important. Okay, the hyperparameter study one is about the lambda in pairwise attention loss. We can see that the peak of the curve is in the middle of zero to one, showing the effectiveness of our pairwise attention loss. Hyperparameter study two is about the historical behavior sequence length n. We can see that it's not the larger n the better. So in order to choose n, we must also consider the efficiency of our algorithm. And here comes the attention loss study. The, uh, the value of delta alpha is calculated using DIN and Cosmo on the three data sets. And the method to calculate alpha is the sum of the attention scores with the same device ID minus the sum of the attention score with different device IDs. We can see that the delta alpha of Cosmo is higher than the delta alpha of DIN because we, because we increase the attention scores of the historical behaviors with the same ID. It's the online A-B test on China Mobile's TV platform. Uh, we use 20% 20, 20 traffic, traffic in total, and the test is from August the 2nd to August the 8th, 2022. We have an improvement in online test. Okay, let's come to the finally conclusion. I think the Cosmo performs well in both online and offline tests. It's because both session information and TV device ID information are useful in TV recommendation scenario. 
And our future work will be researchers on how to efficiently transfer the knowledge of the multiple device data to single device data and how to effectively use the device signal. And thank you for listening.